I want to talk some more college football, and I want to welcome to the show college football analyst Tony Hollinsworth. Tony, how you doing tonight? And how about you? Pretty good, pretty good, Tony. So let's get right to it, Tony. We have the college football playoff matchups. We got the Georgia Bulldogs versus the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's the one versus four matchup. 8 p.m. start on New Year's Eve. But we have in the two versus three matchup, we got the TCU Horn Frogs against the Michigan Wolverines. That starts at four o'clock on ESPN on New Year's Eve. So, Tony, do you believe that the committee got the correct four teams for the college football playoffs this year? Oh, 100%. And and I say that not only as a college football fan, I say that as a very adamant uh, Alabama hater. Um, I will be the first to admit that. Um, I, 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 I say that for a couple of reasons. You know, had USC not lost, I could honestly say that USC would have probably deserved to be in more than Ohio State. My biggest thing against, honestly, Bama, Bama didn't really have a lot of quality wins. They beat Arkansas at the time. They were ranked number 20. They've since gone unranked. They they started to fall extremely hard once yeah. they, they really started that season. They started with a brutal schedule. They started to fall out. Of course, they lose to Tennessee with a last-second field goal. And then, of course, they end up dropping to LSU through a converted uh, two-point conversion. So... The thing I've heard the entire time is that, well, Alabama has, you know, the two best losses out of everybody. So that so that means that they deserve to be in. No, because I'm a big proprietor of you don't exactly get the prize because for lack of better terms, you sucked the best. Yeah. Like you, you can't say you lost the best and get to be in. Like you have to have good quality wins. And it's like to me, they didn't really face anybody other than who they normally face. And yeah. really just wowed me. It's like the two games that I expected you to really win, you you lost both. Now the Tennessee win maybe a flip because that that was actually an overall good game. You know, both teams stuck it out throughout the entire time. Same with the LSU, but this is this is an Alabama team. We typically see them win both of these games with with zero to no issues. So I've heard yeah. a lot that it was injuries, you know. They, they were one of the most undisciplined teams as well this year. So I honestly, I don't know how well they would have fared against somebody like an Ohio State because all it would take is just one defensive stop from Ohio State, and I think Alabama would be in trouble. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people who are Crimson Tide fans, Tony, they are saying that they believe that they deserve to be in the college football playoff. They believe that they would make it a tougher matchup you know, against the Wolverines or maybe even against Georgia. And, but they got two losses, so I'm kind of with you. I feel like even if you feel like the Horn Frogs are not going to be competitive, they've earned the right to play in the college football playoff by winning 12 of their 13 games. Now, I know they lost their conference championship, but 12-1 and one is 12-1. and one. I, I mean, like, it's, I, I understand that we want to see games that are competitive, in the playoffs, but if you earn it, you earn it. So that well, you say me, what? And and let me ask and let me ask you this because I've I've had this question proposed to me before. Because the conference game is technically a bonus game because none of the other none of the other teams play this, with the exception of the two teams that are in. Should the teams be penalized because they're playing that extra game? And to me, to me, I say yes because in my in my opinion. If you can't win your champion, if you can't win your conference, it, it's I, I think you're going to really struggle when you get into the playoffs. Now, obviously, the exception we saw last year with Georgia, they didn't win the SEC, but we we knew throughout a majority of the year that yeah. Georgia was going to be the team to beat. Yeah. Like TCU, we've had questions all year, and we, we still have a lot of questions. You know, how well are they going to do up against Michigan? So, you know. I, I agree with you. I think because TCU did manage to have a really, you know, really tough schedule, they beat all all five ranked opponents that they faced during the regular season. Now, obviously, they lost a, a close overtime game against Kansas State. They've stayed competitive and they stayed consistent. Like you said, they only have one loss, and it's against their it's against basically an extra bonus game that you know maybe they played, maybe they didn't. But like you said, they're they still don't have two losses like Bama does. And I feel like if you're the college football playoff committee, you are really having to advocate for Bama 
for two losses. Now, if they beat somebody, if they beat like the number one team, then they lost two games. Okay, yeah, you could be like, well, no, they they have a shot, but they they didn't do anything like that to me that says, yeah, they deserve to be in there. Now, Tony, let's transition to the actual matchups for the college football playoff. Let's start off with the two versus the three. We got TCU against the Michigan Wolverines. So TCU, the 12 and one, Michigan is 13 and 0. They did win the Big Ten championship against Purdue last week. They beat Ohio State for a second consecutive season. So what are your expectations for this matchup between TCU and Michigan? I expect this to be a game that TCU may go into the half being up because if we look at Michigan's you know history over this past season, they'll either just be ahead at halftime or yeah. they'll be down at halftime. And then the second half is when Michigan makes their adjustments. And really, that's when, to me, you see the true Michigan Wolverine football of big dominating offensive line that controls the line of scrimmage. They wear you down with a lot of these long drives. Now, what I am interested to see and what I think, and I, I kind of compared them a little bit to Georgia last year of how we saw Georgia in the SEC championship and they didn't look like the Georgia that we were, that we had been used to seeing the entire year. So you kind of wonder, okay, maybe they have something up their sleeve that they didn't want to exactly expose to Bama as they were getting ready for a deep playoff run. I feel like Michigan's doing the same thing because all this year, They've had J.J. McCarthy as the starter for, what, 12, 12 of the 13 games that they played? Yeah. Um, he was the starter. And he didn't really do anything that, to me, as a five-star prospect, really made me turn my head. He wasn't lighting it up through through the air with passing yards. He wasn't throwing you know six, seven touchdowns a game. But when he played against Ohio State, you know, two or three of those big plays were passing touchdowns that were just one play, 75 plus yards for for the score. And then Donovan, Donovan Edwards was able to take over the game at the end with the two long rushing touchdowns. So to me, against TCU, TCU will be in it just because of Max Duggan, but I don't trust TCU's defense. I think Max will try his best to keep it competitive. I think it'll be close, but I think this will end with Michigan being up by two scores just because of how dominate how dominant and how powerful that offensive line is. Now, when you talk about the quarterbacks, Tony, in this matchup, you got Max Duggan, Dugan. He got 30 touchdowns, four interceptions, 3,321 passing yards on the season. You compare that to J.J. McCarthy, 20 touchdowns, three interceptions, 2,376 passing yards. Which of these two quarterbacks do you believe has the advantage? To me, I say it's Max. I mean, we we've witnessed it, and I don't know if you watched the Big Big Twelve Championship game or even the I mean, game against Baylor. Yes, yeah, yeah. You you saw him literally put the team on his back, and at the very end to even get the game into you know overtime, you saw how gassed Max Duggan was. That he you know he couldn't stand up. He wanted his team to get away. He couldn't catch his breath. To me, it. I know obviously he's not a finalist for the Heisman. That was a Heisman moment. That was a true quarterback who put his team on his back and said, okay, yeah. we're not doing it running. We're not doing it passing. I will take the ball myself, and I will put us in a position to potentially win the game. So to me, I give it to Max just because of that. Like I said, throughout the year, J.J. has been more of a game manager. We've only seen you know, this last game against Ohio State really and Purdue be his kind of coming out game of he's more of a thrower and a passer instead of what we've seen a majority of the season. He was more of a game manager. They relied heavily on Blake Corum. They relied on Donovan Edwards yeah. and really a, a defense by committee to keep them in these games. It wasn't as much JJ. So to me, I give I give the edge to Max. I agree 100 percent. Let's transition to the night matchup on New Year's Eve. We got Ohio State 11 and 1 against Georgia 13 and 0. It's the high powered Ohio State offense versus that elite Georgia Bulldogs defense. Tony, what are your expectations for this matchup? I expect th this is probably to me going to be the best game of them all. Um, to be honest, it's, it's hard to kind of pick because of what Ohio State wasn't able to do against Michigan. I expected that game to be a lot closer. I, did, I honestly, I didn't have Michigan winning that game, to be 100% honest oh, you with didn't? you. Just No, yeah. I didn't. Because when you when you looked at, when we looked at Ohio State when the season first started, we were, 
we were kind of wondering where the wide receivers for Ohio State, you know, yeah. Smith and Smith and Jigbo, you know, kept getting hurt. He's basically been out a majority of the season. Um, but then, of course, we see Emeka Ibuka come out, had a phenomenal year. And then, of course, we see Marvin Harrison Jr. just decide to show up on the college field and yes. just absolutely ball out throughout the entire year. Yeah. Um, and then the run game for them has been has been very good. Now, what still kind of worries me is Ohio State's defense. Their defense is significantly better than what it was last year. But you look at what they, you know, look at what they had to face this year. They struggled against Penn State until they had kind of a couple, couple takeaways, couple big breaks for that defense, and then their offense was able to help help compensate for that. To me, if Ohio State's offense isn't able to able to get going and struggles against that defense, th this is going to be an ugly game for Ohio State because if that because their defense, they're they're an opportunistic defense. They're not gonna they're not gonna sack you. They're not gonna sack you a whole lot. Now they're gonna probably get a couple turnovers. Yeah. And if they can get those and your offense can capitalize, it'll be a lot better game than what it is. But I, I still worry about whether or not that defense can hold up and if that defense can overcompensate until that offense is able to hopefully get it to click. Because Georgia, while Stetson Bennett hasn't thrown as many yards, hasn't thrown as many touchdowns. Georgia can score. I mean, heck, they dropped 50 on LSU last week. So, I mean, and did it with no issues. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Now, Tony, when you look at the coaches in this matchup, we got Ryan Day. His career record as head coach is 45-5. and five, So he's won 90% of his games. But he lost to Jim Harbaugh twice since he's been the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, something that Urban Meyer had no trouble with. Mm -hmm. um, and you compare him to Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart, obviously, he has a career record of 79 and 15. So he's won 84% of his games as head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. I'm pretty sure I know where you're going to lean here, Tony. But who has the coaching advantage in this particular game? Not necessarily who's accomplished more throughout the career, but just for this game. To, to me, it's Kirby, and I say that because because he has done better in bigger games. I mean, you look at Ryan Day. Ryan Day became the head coach in 2019. He did beat Michigan his first year in 2019, but hasn't beaten them since. And you think about it, Ohio State missed the playoffs last year, yeah. uh, in part because they lost to Oregon and then they lost to Michigan. And then this year, they got in because you know USC really lost more than Ohio State won. So to me, I say it's Kirby. He's got more of the overall experience. I think he's better at getting his guys ready in situational awareness. And it's really no shot of the Big Ten. I am I'm a huge Big Ten fan being in Big Ten country. Now I do love my my LSU Tigers. Yeah. But the the SEC is a different beast. I mean, Georgia is way more battle tested than than Ohio State is. I mean, we we did kind of wonder with with Georgia, you know, struggling against Mizzou, struggling against Kentucky, you know, teams like that that we think, okay, they should wholeheartedly beat Ohio State. You were pretty much able to walk through the Big Ten pretty easily. Now, Northwestern, I don't really count the Northwestern game. That was more Ohio State having to face the weather than they were having to face the Wildcats. So I'm, I'm not really going to take anything away from them. But I would say coaching right now, I would give it to Kirby Smart, hands down. A couple more questions for you, Tony. I have Tony. Hollinsworth, he is radio host and college football analyst, knows his stuff. Glad to have you on tonight, man. Let's talk about C.J. Stroud. He got 37 touchdowns, six interceptions, 3,340 passing yards for the season. He's a Heisman candidate. What are your expectations for C.J. Stroud going up against this elite Bulldogs defense? I, I think he's still going to do really well. I mean, this this is a guy that you look at him all year. He's he's performed really well. And really, the only game that I saw CJ kind of struggle in, and I never really saw him bounce back, was the game against Maryland. And I don't really... I don't really fault him for that as much as I think Ohio State just got in their own way. Kind of the same with Michigan almost stumbling against Illinois. They were both looking ahead, wanting to face each other rather yeah. than trying to face the games in front of them. So I, I expect CJ to do pretty well. Like I said, I think he'll struggle in the first half, uh, but after some second half adjustments, I think he'll probably flow flow right in pretty well. Um, 
So I, I expect him to have a pretty, pretty decent game. I don't, I don't think this is going to be one that we see a, a total crumbling of CJ Stroud. And I know a lot of Ohio state fans say that Ohio state is broken because they've lost to Michigan twice, but I don't really hear them saying that as much now that they're number four and actually in the playoffs. So. Yeah, for sure, Tony. But I'm going to get your prediction on these two games as we get closer to, to these two matchups on New Year's Eve. But before you go, we have the Heisman Trophy presentation Saturday in New York. We got quarterback Caleb Williams of USC. We got C.J. Stroud of Ohio State. We got Max Dugan of TCU. And we got Stenson Bennett of Georgia. Who do you expect to win the Heisman Trophy? I honestly, I think, I think Caleb Williams is going to win it um, purely just because of statistics. You know, you look at everything he did for USC. Now, I think it would have been more of a definitive had, you know, USC made it into the playoffs. Um, but he, he had overall a fantastic statistical year. You know, he got USC back on the map as far as being a relevant, you know, top school again. Now, the fan in me, the fan says Max Dugan deserves it just because, like I said, how he's literally carried the team. I mean, the kid also had open heart surgery, you know, four weeks before the season started and then was able to walk out on the field and do what he's been able to do all season. Um, CJ, I could make an argument for him. The only one that I honestly I can't make an argument much for is Stetson because I, I don't really give it to Stetson Bennett as much as I just do that Georgia defense. Like, if you can give the Georgia defense the Heisman Trophy, yeah. 100%, but I don't really give it to Stetson <laughs> as much as I as much as much I do Georgia. So, yeah, I think I think Caleb is gonna is probably going to run away with it with, with pretty good ease. He is Tony Hollinsworth. Tony, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Yes, sir. So y'all can find me on Instagram at Inside the Hoosier Mind. Uh, that is also my podcast name. If you look on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, etc., uh, I am on the ASAP Network as well. You can find me there. You can also find me on Odds Pods Media with uh, the show Big Ten Plus Four, where we talk primarily uh, college football and college basketball for the Big Ten Conference as well. He is Tony Hollinsworth on the Wise Guy Sports Show. Tony, I'm going to bring you back on again here soon and talk some more college football i appreciate you coming on the show tonight yes sir thank you i appreciate it and anytime anytime you want me to hop on i i'm more than welcome to i'm also more than happy to to give you a little bit of grief about your about your packers and, and aaron Rodgers. <laughs> oh yeah man we having a, it's, just, it's been a struggle for us tony it's been a struggle man it really has we got we got a bad week this week so this week i don't have to suffer i can i can relax and watch football this weekend and not have my heart into any of these games so uh, I'm definitely excited to, to, about that. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. For sure. For sure. He's Tony Hollinsworth. Appreciate you joining me tonight, Tony. Appreciate it, man. Have a good night. You as well. He's Tony Hollinsworth. Go and follow him on all social media platforms. He does a great job covering college football, and he's definitely doing his thing. 